Hello, am I audible? Good morning, all. Greetings from AVP Research Foundation. I am Dr. Betsy Vargis, Junior Research Officer, AVP Research Foundation. And we wish you all a happy new year. So let's start this year with a very important topic. That is how to become a good parent. So parenting, what do you mean by parenting? Parenting, it literally means that it's an ability to bringing up a child as a parent. But when you go to the true meaning of parenting, it is the process of raising the children uh, and providing them protection in order to ensure the healthy development into an adulthood. So the change from a child to an adult is very different. When a child was a, when, when a, uh, a person is a child, he will accept all the facts. He will not question it. He will accept everything. And when he changed from a child to, in, to an adult, that means the adolescent age, he, the, he will have a lot of questions like, what he accepted and um, he, he will ask himself or herself that is it right is it wrong shall i follow this shall i follow it or not so there will be a lot of questions and conflicts will happen in his in his, his or her mind so is the aim of a parent to help the child to choose what is right what is wrong and how to make decisions is the important role of a parent. So it all shows that a parent have to be very careful while raising a child. So let's see how to be become a good parent. So there's, there's a term called parent styling. That means a constellation of parents' attitudes and behavior towards children and an emotional climate in which the parents' behavior are expressed. So basically, there are four types of parenting styles. First one is the authoritative parenting style. Second one is the authoritarian parenting style. And third one, is indulgent, indulgent parent style. And fourth one is the neglectful parent style. And each parenting style is different. Let's see what are the differences. First one is the authoritative parenting style. So what are their characters? These type of parents are very high in responsiveness and demandingness. And what they really do is they will give the full freedom to the kids. The same time, they will set a rule of restrictions, like they will set some rule of discipline. And they will provide support and warmth for the children. And they clearly define rules and consistent discipline will be there. And how it, uh, how the, their, uh, the change will be in the adolescent age. The higher levels of uh, parent and ad adolescent cohesion. So they have the freedom to tell everything to their parents. They know that what the rules of uh, discipline so that they will share everything with the pa uh, parents so that there will be a parent adolescent ad cohesion will be there. So the higher levels of parent adolescent cohesion is there in the authoritative parenting style. And it is most beneficial to you with regard to fostering healthy normative development of their autonomy and have children and adolescents who are more likely to endorse the legitimacy of parental authority. That is the first one, that is the authoritative parenting style. That means they give freedom, but also they set some rules of discipline. 
and second one is the authoritarian parenting style in which there's low in responsiveness but high in demand like they will say don't do this don't do that so they're full of restrictions will be there then the uh, child will not get any freedom to uh, do something something innovative or something uh, he she or he is interested to do it was all restricted there so normally there will be conflicts between uh, the parent and the child when they become an adult and they use hostile control or harsh punishment in an arbitrary way to gain complaints and seldom provide explanation or allow verbal give and take and the third one is the indulgent parent style indulgent or permissive parenting style in which they're slow in demandingness but high in responsiveness and they will not uh, say any kind of do you know, restrictions or any kind of rules they will give full freedom to the uh, kid so if the kid says like i want ice cream they will bring ice cream to the parent could, could the kid they said that i'm not feeling well i'm not going to school today so that okay no problem so what will happen the 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 child will take it in a wrong sense and that will lead to his kind of destruction in the discipline in his life and is responsive to their children but satisfy children's needs uh, some of them will may uh, think that giving restrictions to the kid is kind of uh, negative so they will not put uh, keep any restriction they will give full freedom and they fail to set proper disciplinary exhibit behavioral control or make demands for mature behaviors and third one is the neglectful parenting style neglectful uh, neglectful parenting style they are low in responsiveness and demandingness and they will not even think about the child whenever the ch uh, children approach there they will they will be uh, busy with their uh, duty schedule or we see with some other matters they will not care about the child so there will be a lot of conflicts and uh, when it change into when the child become an adult the child will not have a role don't understand the role of a parent in her or his life so it is mostly parent centered and seldom engage in child rearing practices and neither provide warm no set rules for their children so there are, as i said there are four kind of parenting styling are there authoritative authoritarian uh, third one is the permissive and fourth one is the neglectful so authoritarian uh, authoritative parenting style have low conflicts so there will be a, can be a good parent and remaining ones the authoritarian and neglectful and um, permissive parenting style will have a lot of conflicts when the child change from the childhood to the adolescence and how to be a good parent what all things you can do to your child to make him a good adult and how you can be a good uh, parent first one is consider your child as um a good friend talk to them just uh, talk to them and take uh, spend some time with them like try to understand their emotions how they feel how they want to talk and how was their day uh, is there anything irritating or disturbing him or her just ask her like, like um from child to adults and age there will be a lot of emotional fluctuations will be there uh, when, when they reach the adults and age they will be more exposed to the society and they will gain many things from the society and they will get really disturbed about the fact that this is not exactly what i get in my home my home environment and where i am now where what i get from the society is entirely different so what uh what should i ac accept the my family one or the society one so 
so there will be a lot of like uh, like confusions con- conflicts come to his or her mind so talk to them consider them as a best friend and talk to them without judgment why i use that without judgment that whenever someone share you something they didn't want a judgment they want someone who listen them carefully so just like that a kid really need some attention and want to be a good wants a good listener so be a good listener spend time with them and understand what their status of mental health and what are the issues affecting them and what are emotions in their mind and next one is don't call negative names we all are human we will make mistake sure it's sure like anything so they will make mistake don't call them like stupid you monkey face you you fatty don't call like that because they are very sensitive so even if you um, call them that negative name without meaning anything that will always stick on their mind and whenever they will feel low in their energy like men when whenever they feel some kind of dif- uh, difficulty to manage the emotions this all will come up so don't call any kind of negative names and uh, next one is don't be too permissive like don't give full freedom without uh, uh, giving any restrictions just tell them they have uh, just give them freedom what they really need and don't allow uh, to go outside that one also like uh, giving freedom is also giving some responsibility freedom never means that there is no rules no responsibility nothing like that freedom means there is freedom with responsibility that they have to understand and uh, next one is help them to take good decisions and when they are uh, when they have to take good decisions don't say you have to take decision no don't say like that help them to take good decision the ultimate this the final decision will be there but you have to guide them that this will be the positive side this will be the negative side anyway uh, your uh, final the word is yours just guide them uh many times uh, uh, many i have seen that many parents they will draw their uh, ch- the work for their like any paintings or any drawing for their children as a work from the school the parents itself do that don't do like that make the child do like do with her intelligence for from for from her aspect from their uh, imagination let her do that so only guide them with without uh, using some any kind of harsh words they will make many times mistakes many times uh, so be patient be patient and uh, stay with them and help them to make good decisions and appreciate them for a kid whatever they make is a big thing like uh if they uh did something like if they make a small uh unshaped one that that is also something they need so appreciate them then same time you have to tell them that no beta it's not like this you have to do like this if for example a, a kid is painting and uh like coloring one elephant picture and he using pink color and uh, for the trunk she is using some other color and tell them that uh, let her huh? is good looking good but beta is not like that you have to use the black color for the or ash color for this elephant so same time you appreciate the baby or the kid same time you uh, make her understand that what what is the reality what uh, what an elephant what is the real color of an elephant and uh, next one is don't uh, irritate them with past things many many parents did the same thing like in 1992 september 4 midnight 12 pm you did like this you remember and last day you did like this last time last number you did like this 
don't tell like that past is past and if i repeat if they are repeating the same mistakes again and again tell them that why are you doing the same mistakes again and again so correct them with a uh, patient and uh, call them and uh, tell them with a very happy and very calm sound and make them understand that the what they what they what the mistake they made okay and don't overtake their, their responsibility many times during our op days many time the peer, parents will come and say doctor she is no he or she is not taking any food at all and then we ask the uh, uh, kid like don't don't, uh, don't you feel hungry are you not taking food properly the kid will say like that i'm taking food properly doctor and then i will look into the parent and he he is telling like that he is taking the food properly what then what's the problem with you and they will like no doctor she is not taking um, properly food and then the next question comes like this i will ask them the question like what will be the problem if the poor, the child is not taking proper food then the father or mother will tell like most probably mother will tell like uh, look he is skinny and become very lean and the family was called in me like anything so the real problem is that the 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 kid is become lean is the problem at the same time what the society or family will tell that is the problem of the parent so when uh, you have to feed a kid kid up to the age of 2 3 4 or 5 after that he or she knows that when she feel hungry i want something they, they really know that so when they feel hungry they, they will take food and when they feel like it's okay i i am i am i am full now then they will stop eating food so don't take their response ba- basic responsibilities okay and next one is the eq is equal important as iq what is eq is emotional quotient emotional quotient and iq means intelligence quotient many parents are very fond of intelligence quotient like uh, um, how much uh, brilliant how much intelligent my kid is they were thinking like that the same time you have to think about the emotional side of your kid is your, is your child is happy is there any problem uh, have uh, they having just think talk to them and understand their mental status nowadays uh, kids are very different they ha- they are uh, they are in a bold to take their own decision but the decision should not be based on any emotions sometimes they will come very stubborn uh, uh, based on some kind of revenge to someone don't be like that so try to understand their emotional status how is their mental status basically we have four uh, emotions like happiness sadness angry uh, and peace but uh, um, the remaining ones like jealous and all are the abnormal state of mind so tell them to understand what is their problem what are their mental problems like mental problem never means uh, any kind of psychiatric disease not like that it's kind of or anything any issue that affecting them like personally or um, in a, at school or college or at uh, inside the home so just talk to them and understand uh, make them understand that you may you, your emotion is also important just like your physical physical and intellectual health so make them understand the uh, value of emotional health and stop comparison many times it's happen like this that they will compare to their neighbors their cousins their own siblings don't do like that because each person is different a person a is different person b person b is different from person person c so everyone is different so let them uh let them do whatever they like let them do how they want to be they we want they don't want anything like a a like what do you say um a copy of another person if dr betsy is dr betsy dr betsy will be unique 
if dr arati or dr um, or someone like um dr suja or sumitra they have their own identity let them keep that identity themselves don't uh, try to compare them compare them if they go some low marks or if not performing well at school just go uh, talk to them what is the problem with that uh, why did you score so low in uh, to, uh, this semester or uh, this exam just talk to them and understand the problem and help them to clarify that problem that's the thing and don't come by why you were next bench or the next the student sitting next to you got this much mark why did you get this much mark don't, don't do like that and next one is no gender discrimination this is actually happening within the family that is the real fact that many many kind of you know uh, a boy should not cry a girl, a girl should not uh, be angry uh, i think many girls are familiar with the word like you have to adjust not do like that so um make them feel that every everyone has equal um equality is there so no kind of discrimination should be there in the family a boy and a girl should be treated equally in the family then they will uh, when they go out of the family they will understand it uh, they will be able to uh, treat the other gender with equal respect so parenting is not a simple task it needs so much responsibility so much patience and um, you you will really need some um, good experience and you will make mistake do, during your first first stages of parenting you will, will definitely make some mistakes but try to change it and and you also had a, once you also had a childhood just try to understand what all things you uh, felt at that time and what all changes you had your, uh, what you had in your time just understand it and make your children understand that and De don't be too close and don't to to uh, don't be too far just always stay with your kids because parents are the real heroes of the family of a kid so try to be a good parent and um, help them and be with them so that's for our uh, today session thank you for being with me thank you so much good day